Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 13.3, which is all about trigonometric functions and the unit circle. So let's start off with what the unit circle is. So the unit circle is the circle of x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that's the equation of the unit circle. And if you remember from studying circles earlier, we know that that means that it is a circle with a radius of 1 and a center at 0, 0. So the unit circle is called the unit circle because its radius is 1 and it's centered at 0, 0. So you can see kind of a picture of what that circle looks like here. So when we have a unit circle, each point, no matter where it is along the outside of that circle, has trig functions that go with it. So these trig functions have to do with the signs of where it is or which coordinate or which quadrant it's in, and they have to do with that radius of one. So remember from before that the sine function is y over r. In this case, the radius is always one because it's the unit circle. So that means that y divided by one is really just y. So in the unit circle, the sine of any angle is just the y coordinate. The cosine, if you remember from before, is x over r, and same thing, the radius is always going to be 1, so that means that x divided by 1 is just going to be x. So the cosine of any point on the unit circle is always going to be the x coordinate. And lastly, we have tangent, which is still going to be y divided by x. So when we're looking at any point along that unit circle or anywhere on that unit circle, the coordinates, the x is going to be the cosine of theta and the y is going to be sine of theta. So it's a unique circle that allows us to find the trig function somewhat easily. Let's talk about a few more definitions before we move on. So the first one is called a quadrantal angle. So that is an angle in standard position. So remember, that's where it starts at that positive x-axis. And its terminal side is going to lie on an axis as well. So it can be on y or x. And that is where the measure is going to be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. And then we still have reference angles. So a reference angle is um, the acute angle, and we use the letter theta for it, which is formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So remember finding where it is closest to the x-axis. So let's practice finding a few of those reference angles here. So for this one, we have um, our, in that, if the angle lies in that second quadrant, then theta would be the original angle that started at that positive x-axis. And to find the reference angle, so remember that would be this angle over here, to find that, we would take um, 180, because that is closest in degrees, and we would subtract out that theta angle. So to find that reference angle, I'd do 180 degrees minus theta. In radians, it's similar. We would still find theta, but we don't use 180. 180 degrees is the same as pi. So I would do pi minus the original theta if it was in radians. All right, if it lies in that third quadrant, so theta is my original angle over here, and my reference angle that I'm trying to find is how far is it from that negative x-axis. So to find theta in degrees or radians, um, in degrees I would take that original angle that's in standard position, and I would subtract 20. So getting back to that x-axis, since we have to go kind of backwards to find that. In radians, that would look similar. I would take theta, but again, instead of subtracting 180, because that's in degrees, I would subtract pi. 
All right, and then we have our last one. So this one is lying in the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant to find theta, I am trying to find how far it is from that full circle, basically. So we have our original angle, which is the red one. We're trying to find the reference angle, which is in blue. So I am going to take the entire circle, which is 360 degrees or two pi in radians, and I am going to subtract out that original angle. So we're just finding the little bit that's left to get to a full circle, which is 360 degrees or two pi. Okay, let's practice a little bit finding those reference angles. So here in example one, we are going to find the reference angle for 210 degrees. So 210 degrees in standard position starts there, goes past 180 to 210 degrees. So there's my initial angle. Now I want to find that reference angle. So that's how far it is from that negative x axis. So to find theta, I am going to take that initial angle, 210, and I'm going to subtract this closest one, which in this case is 180 degrees. So when I simplify that, I get my reference angle, which we denote with a little apostrophe after it, is 30 degrees. Okay, let's look at another one here. So this one is 2 pi over 3. So that's just under a pi. So that's going to be here in that second quadrant. So there's my initial angle. To find my reference angle, which would be how far it is from there, I am going to take my half circle, which would be pi in radians and I am going to subtract out my 2 pi over 3. And when I do that, I get that my reference angle is pi over 3. So there's some examples of finding those reference angles. Okay, let's continue on here. So some things we need to know. We might need to convert from degrees to radians as we go through this. So to convert to degrees, or to convert two radians from degrees, you're going to multiply the degree measure um, by pi over 180. So anytime we have a degree amount, we're going to multiply it by pi over 180 to get the amount in radians. So last thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at some special angles. So some angles that we refer to often as we go through things here. So we're going to start with 0 degrees or 360. That's the beginning or the end of a complete circle. So 0 or 360, if it's 0, then it's also 0 radians. It's no radians. If we go all the way around in radians, that's 2 pi. All right, so let's talk or think about where that would be on the circle. So remember, that would be that beginning initial side that's on the positive x-axis. So if we think about the sine, we want to remember that sine is the y-coordinate of each of these and cosine is the x-coordinate of each of these. So when we're writing these, we would know that the y-coordinate, because it's at zero, is still on that x-axis. So it has a zero y-coordinate. And its cosine, because it's on the unit circle, is one out from that origin. So my point would be at one, zero. And that means that my tangent would be 0 divided by 1. Because remember, it's y divided by x, so that would just be 0. Okay, pi over 6. If we convert that back to degrees, so remember, pi is half a circle, 180. If we divide that into 6 equal parts, that's 30 degrees each. So 30 degrees and pi over 6 are equivalent. 30 degrees, its sine value is going to be 1 half and its cosine value is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So the coordinates of the point are square root of 3 over 2, and that's 1 half for the y. And then when I divide those, that's going to be 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. And when I simplify that, I would get 1 over the square root of 3 
which of course I need to rationalize. So it would come out to the square root of three over three for the tangent value. All right, 45 degrees. So if I convert that to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, I get pi over four, because there's four 45 degree angles in the 180 to get to pi. All right, the y coordinate of that is square root of two over two. And so is the x coordinate. Remember, 45 degree or pi over four degree angles make special right triangles where the legs are the same. So the coordinates there would be square root of two over two and square root of two over two. And so when I divide those by itself, I get a tangent of one. All right, pi over three. So thinking about if I take pi, which is the same as 180, divide it into three equals parts, 180 divided by three, that's gonna give me a 60 degree angle. The y coordinate of that is square root of three over two. And the x coordinate is one half. So that would give me the point one half square root of three over two. And when I divide y by x there, Square root of three over two divided by one half, that is going to give me the square root of three as the tangent. Okay, last few special angles here. So 90 degrees, remember that would be that um, quarter, the first quadrant basically, and that is pi over two in radians. So if we think about that sticking straight up, it um, has a y coordinate of one and an x-coordinate of zero. So it's at the point zero, one straight up from the origin. So when I divide that, I do one over zero, and that is undefined. Remember, we cannot divide by zero. So we would say that the tangent of 90 degrees is undefined. It's not possible. All right, 180, that's halfway around. That is pi in radians. So if we are on that x-axis, on the negative side, that means that the y coordinate is zero because it's on the x axis and its x value is negative one. So our point would be negative one, zero for 180 degrees. And when I divide those, zero over negative one, that gives me a tangent of 180 of zero. All right, and then lastly, three pi over two. So that's three quadrants, if you will, which is 270 of the 360 degrees in a whole circle. So that one is going straight down from the origin. So its y value is negative one and its x value is zero. So the point there would be zero, negative one. And when I divide those, I get negative one over zero, which is again undefined. So the tangent of 270 degrees is also undefined. Okay. So these represent the special angles that we need to know in the unit circle. So we've got 30, 45, 60, 90. So that all fits in the first quadrant. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build the rest of the unit circle by just reflecting that over different spots. So here's what it looks like. Here is the completed unit circle. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So you can see those initial ones that we had in the table as 30, 45, and 60 in that first quadrant. But then you can see, and I tried to color code it for you so you could see, but everything reflects over that second quadrant. So pi over three and two pi over three, or 60 and 120 degrees, are the same thing just reflected, so the x becomes negative. Same thing with the 45 and the 135. It's just reflected into that second quadrant. So the x value becomes negative. And then lastly, we've got the 30 degree angle and the 150 or the pi over six and five pi over six, same thing. It's just reflected over there. So the x becomes positive. And then you can see that pattern continues for the other two quadrants. So we can complete the entire unit circle knowing just those first three or four angles in the unit circle. So if you can get those 30, 45, and 60 figured out, then you're just figuring out what quadrant it's reflected into. And then what that allows us to do is just figure out the signs based on the quadrant. So we're gonna fill in this table down below with 
the signs based on the quadrant. Because then you know the numbers and then you know the signs. You can put them together to make the entire unit circle. So in the first quadrant, the y and the x are both positive, And that means when I divide them, I get a positive answer. In the second quadrant, the y is positive because it's above the x-axis. But the x is negative. So when I divide y over x, I get a negative. In the third quadrant, the y-coordinate is negative and the x-coordinate is negative. So when I divide them for tangent, I get a positive. In the fourth quadrant, the y-coordinate is going to be negative because it's below the x-axis. The x is going to be back to positive. And so when I divide those, I am again going to get a negative. So that is that setup of the unit circle. Take a chance to study it, look it over, keep remembering it, keep coming back to it, and we'll use it for some other things later. We'll see you next time.